I've got another shop upgrade, another tool review, and some more stickers. All coming up right here, so stick around. Well, hello everyone. Today is Saturday, May 21st. Welcome to another edition of Shop Talk. My name is Mike and I'd like to welcome you to my workshop. So what's been going on this week? Well, if you watched my last video release, you'll know that this past week I finally got the mobile base uh, installed, assembled and installed on my very large uh, Powermatic 24 inch bandsaw. I was a little bit intimidated going into that project. I'd had the mobile base for a couple weeks and I finally decided to go ahead and assemble it and make my best attempt at it. And it, it worked out really well and as I showed in the video it kind of went together as a kind of a clamshell um, around the base and I used the, the ceiling uh, rafters to kind of hoist the saw up just enough to get the base underneath. So uh, if you're interested in seeing how I did that, you can uh, watch the video or I'll leave a link in the description below. So I also uh, shared, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I shared some pictures of some birthday presents that I received and I had some questions about those. Uh, so I thought I'd just uh, answer them here. The, the chisels that I got from my mom were a set of uh, Stanley Bailey. Uh, they're professional uh, series chisels. They have a nice uh, beechwood handles with uh, brass uh, rings around the ends of the handles as well as where the, the tool uh, is inserted into the handle. They're, um, the steel is Sheffield England uh, tool steel. It's a set of five. Um, one, one viewer commented that they're very sharp right out of the box and I would attest to that. I've not actually tried them uh, but, but they do appear to be very very sharp and um, so I have several different chisels, some uh, kind of uh, bench knock around chisels, a set of chisels that I bought in Germany a couple years ago when I was over on a missions trip. And so this will be a nice addition to my uh, chisel collection. So really looking forward to using those. They also came in a leather case, which I guess technically I could use that leather for a leather strop. But uh, anyhow, so I've been meaning to order some uh, Shapton ceramic stones. That's really the, the stones that I've kind of decided I wanted to use. I've seen all different brands and styles and that's something I've I settled on. And so I used some birthday money that I received and ordered the first two. Um, one of them came today actually. This one's a Shapton it's a professional series 5000 uh, grit. So it's a fine. And if you're not familiar with these stones, they come in these plastic cases. Um, it's a ceramic stone. You just spritz a little bit of water on them and you can start using them immediately, which is very convenient. You don't have to soak them. Um, and then you just kind of lightly dry them off, close the case and store them in your shop that way. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've got another thousand grit one coming as well. And, and then I'll probably order maybe like a 320 grit to have a really coarse stone and maybe a an 8,000 grit uh, for just finely honing um, tools once I get them set. So I've got a, a honing guide from Veritas that I received as a gift probably a year and a half ago. So I'll finally actually get to start using that. So um, in other news, I have been doing this kind of tool. Like I said, I'm not really calling them tool review because I'm not covering every aspect of the tools, but just kind of introducing you to some of the shop tools that I have in my shop. And so far, the, the reception's been pretty good with that. I'm just sharing some of the tools that I have, how I came about owning those tools, and it seems like folks want me to continue doing that. So that's what I'm going to do. And we'll start right now with the next tool. And so the tool that I'm talking about this week is my bench top drill press. Now for years I had a Craftsman uh, stand-up drill press that was my father's and really in the, my previous shop I really didn't have adequate floor space to keep that press and so I decided to sell it and purchase a bench top version and actually Jay Bates had this particular bench top press and he'd said you know for the money it was really uh, not a bad press so I decided to buy this one. It is the 13 inch um, bench top press from Harbor Freight. It's a central machinery. It's got uh, speeds ranging from 220 RPM all the way up to 3600 RPM. And so it's a 16 speed. The uh, chuck capacity goes all the way up to 5 eighths. 
and the table does tilt from zero to 45 degrees. Um, as you can see, the, my table here is a mess. Um, I really need to clean this off, but I built this, uh, this table um, similar to uh, some other YouTuber. I can't remember the exact uh, channel that I, that I saw this from, but it's a pretty simple top. It just clamps on using these um, camper, camper shell clamps onto the table. It's got these little slide out uh, drill bit drawers that are basically just a piece of hardboard with some MDF kind of glued and brad nailed to that hardboard. And there's no real dividers in, that, in either side. There's a little cutout here for a finger pull where you can easily grab. This one actually has maple. Um, it probably, in retrospect, would be better if I actually had some dividers in here so I could break up divide up the drill bits by size, but it works. Um, I've got some of this uh, Rockler, I think it's Rockler T-Track, the smaller T-Track that I use, both for hold downs that can slide in here, as well as this fence assembly, which has a, a, some uh, T-bolts or uh, T-Track bolts. I had these knobs on both sides, but it just so happened that, and poor planning on my part, when I placed this particular T-Track, it was right in line with how this handle on the press um, swings the, uh, the, the chuck down. And so depending on where the, this table is, oftentimes the handle will bump into the, the turn handle here. And so I replaced it with a wing nut. In fact, it still interferes sometimes. So it's kind of frustrating at times. If I'm really close, I have to actually back out one of these handles, unscrew it and that's a little bit inconvenient, but it works. Um, but so far, this uh, drill press has been, uh, it's been fine for me. It's been able to uh, do everything that I've thrown at it. It's got pretty clean um, motion. Um, since I had to build this miter uh, saw workstation, I just extended uh, this section in order to place the drill press here. And so far it's, it's worked out well here. I do have a future drop that's going to come down and serve both the drill press as well as my kind of CNC uh, station over here from the uh, Shapoko that I purchased two years ago that I've never gotten working yet. So that's another future project. But uh, I don't know really what much else to say. The, uh, the top just flips open. It's got a little plate inside the top here that shows you all the different pulley uh, configurations to get the speed that you want. Right now I've got it set on one of the lowest speeds. I think, uh, let's see, 480 RPM, somewhere around there. It's pretty low. Uh, it seems to work, work well, for kind of a universal, and it's pretty easy to, uh, to change the RPM. So I did have one time, uh, the chuck came, came loose. I think I drilled into something and it kind of was binding up and but since then, once I got it pressed back in there, I haven't had any problems with it. So, uh, yeah, works pretty good. The, uh, the table adjusts very easily. It's got a turn screw handle back here on the, on the main column and another one off to the side over here um, to, or a crank handle to raise it up and down. And then you've got one under here as well for the tilting, which I, I don't really use. Uh, I have used it, but uh, I don't use it very often, so but it works well. And I just took a little rare earth magnet and put it on the end of the uh, the chuck key, and I just stick it right up there, so I know it's right there, easy to use. As far as adjusting uh, the presets, there's a little thumb screw type swivel handle here that you just unscrew, and you can adjust, adjust this collar for how far you want it to uh, to be able to, to to drill down if you want preset, you know, a stop. And uh, that works well. And let's see, what else? I think that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, you can get these uh, pretty good uh, specials at Harbor Freight. And like I said, it's worked really well for me for everything I need in the shop. So that's about all I got on that. Okay, so the uh, last thing before I get to stickers and kind of what, what I'm looking uh, to, to be working on here in the coming weeks 
is I've been receiving a lot of comments, or I say a lot, several comments in the past uh, few Shop Talk updates asking, or questions asking, when am I going to do uh, build videos, or when am I going to be doing a project video. So I just wanted to uh, address those. I appreciate the comments and the feedback. Um, I've mentioned this before, uh, and I probably should should do like a, a channel trailer, a traditional channel trailer video to kind of talk about what what goes on here with this particular channel. But I'll just say it again uh, for those who have, have not seen it. This is a hobby of mine. Um, I have a full-time job as well as tons of other obligations, but I absolutely love woodworking and I love the woodworking community on YouTube and that's really what, what drew me to uh, starting my own channel. And so I'm, I'm trying to do as much as I absolutely can with this channel in terms of getting content uploaded and good content. And so um, I'm also in the process of setting up my new shop. With that said, I'm doing these weekly shop talk updates and that's really all they are. They're just talks, uh, primarily talking. If I'm doing anything in the shop throughout the week, I'll kind of give you an update on that, like with the uh, mobile base for the bandsaw, different shop projects and things like that. So there will be occasional projects um, intermingled into the shop talks, but the shop talks are really just a way for me to kind of stay connected with, with everyone out there. And I do intend to do projects. I intend to do uh, furniture builds. I intend to start using my welder and doing some metalworking projects. I've got loads and loads of ideas for future projects, but my shop is not completely set up yet. And so that's kind of my priority. I, I can't work uh, efficiently in the shop until I get all of that set up. So I appreciate your viewing. I appreciate you subscribing. Uh, I hope that you'll stick with me and um, enjoy these talks as you kind of see what's, what's going on, the progression in my shop. And then eventually I do hope to, to start doing some traditional um, project videos. But Again, I'm not doing this full time. I'm just really doing this for fun. So hopefully that addresses that question. I'm sorry if, if I'm not able to, uh, to put enough project videos out there uh, for you uh, or for your liking, but I'm doing the best I can. Um, so stickers. I did receive a few stickers in the mail this week, so I was excited to, uh, to get those and share those with you. The first one was um, from Zach at uh, Southern Ginger and you can reach him at realsouthernginger.com. I met Zach in Atlanta. It looks like he redesigned his sticker. It's a pretty, uh, pretty nice design, and I love the uh, color he used for his envelopes. So I've got to get me some of those. So thank you, Zach. I appreciate the updated sticker. The next one is uh, I got a note and a sticker from Josh at uh, Maple Ridge Woodworks, and I just recently uh, started following Josh on Instagram, I think, and he makes some really nice uh, fishnets. Just really amazing work. I'm not sure exactly what the material is for the net, but uh, you really got to go check check out his stuff. So thanks, Josh, for that. Uh, next up, I received just a super kind note and sticker from Mark at Remarkable Woodworks. So thank you, Mark, so much. I really appreciate the encouraging words, and thank you for the sticker. And last but not least, I got a sticker, finally, from Ken over at Caged Creations. So uh, if you're not familiar with Ken, Ken was uh, kind of involved in the Google Hangout that we did here a while back with some, some newer folks uh, like myself on YouTube. And uh, this is about the third attempt, and I've had the same problem with stickers going out. Ken has tried several times sending me stickers, and I've not received them, but finally did get that one, Ken, so thank you so much. Uh, with regard to stickers, I still have, uh, I don't know, a pack and a half of these stickers, and I'm sure that I'll order some more uh, when I run out. But if you'd like some of my stickers, just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to the P.O. box and my, on the About tab of my, of my banner down below and I'll be happy to uh, mail you some stickers. Or you can send me a sticker to that same address and I'll reciprocate and send you some. So if you like this shop talk, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. I'll have more shop talks, tool talks, uh, project builds, hopefully in the near future, um, coming up as well as some collaboration. So that's coming up next month, kind of getting that kicked off and it may take some time before we get that content uploaded. but. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching and let's roll the sticker music. Mm -hmm.